Oh dear, this didn't turn out so much a tear down as a tear to shreds. This is um, a fairly generic LED lamp um, branded by Duracell. Now I'm not sure if it's custom made for Duracell or it's just a branding on it. I've seen very similar lamps, uh, same sort of lens in the front, same pattern of LEDs inside uh, with other brands in them as well. And I'd guess that since Duracell is really just a sort of maybe an oldish brand that used to be associated with alkaline batteries um, that it's probably just trying to use the brand name <coughs> but anyway I digress the light has a Fresnel type lens in it, plastic lens to spread the light <coughs> it's got eight half watt chips to create the four watt emitter on a thin shim of circuit board material on the aluminium substrate that is then put into what's left of this reflector and it's held on into this with a bit of heat sink compound with two screws into the two posts inside. Um, the reflector is stuck in with a sort of thermally conductive glue I'm guessing. It's kind of slightly not quite silicony, powdery. It's I'm not 100% sure about this. It's it's not brittle in any way, it just feels... Initially I thought it was um, a double-sided foam tape, which would be quite hard to actually put in, but it's definitely a glue, it's squished about, so I'd guess it's a sort of silicon carrier for maybe zinc oxide or something like that as the heat transfer. So in the base is this little power supply, and it's quite unusual, it's not like the normal LED lamp power supplies. Um, the chip on the back is one that I've never heard of before. I did a search on the internet, an AJM3JA, and I have to say, I I didn't find a single Google hit for this chip, so I haven't a clue if it's just a proprietary chip or something like that, I'm not really sure. But anyway, the power comes in, it goes through a fusible resistor, um, through a bridge rectifier, and instead of a large electrolytic capacitor as usual, in these type of lamps. There are two smaller um, film capacitors, more like suppression type capacitors, and the DC output from the rectifier goes first to this capacitor and then through this choke to the next capacitor. The chips mount in the back that support components, quite a lot of support components, and instead of a transformer it's using a choke almost like a compact fluorescent lamp in a way, but it just must be running at a fixed frequency. Um, and these two capacitors and the output are 10 megafarad at 50 volt, and then the one that's actually wired across the LEDs themselves is 35 volt and 100 microfarad. And it must just be a mains driven buck regulator. That's all I can really think it would be. It's quite an unusual uh, thing to find in one of these lamps. Uh, most of the other lamps seem to use BP semi chips, um, which are sort of dedicated um, 3 watt LED drivers. But um, it's quite unusual and quite refreshing to find something like this inside. It's quite uh, quite an interesting alternative to the usual circuitry. Maybe that's um, because this is so isolated inside that they can use a uh, supply that's um, directly referenced to the mains because. With these type of lamps, you'd really want some sort of isolation um, in case there was some um, electrical connectivity to the metal shell. But with the all plastic housing, that's not so critical. So, quite a destructive teardown, quite an expensive teardown as well. This was not a cheap lamp because they're obviously, as soon as you stick the name Duracell on something, the price gets a zero in the end. But um, yeah, there you go, quite an interesting lamp. 